Spring semester's over. Summer's here. Time to get back to work. So, in case you all didn't know, I did not abandon my YouTube channel like some people online have begun to think. I was busy with school and I graduated, finally, right? But no, it dawned on me, what was it, yesterday? That I bought the Power Book a year ago. So, is it still usable? Let's find out. So the last time you saw my power book, it looked a little bit different than this. Um, it was running the Mac OS Sierra theme. It had the Sierra wallpaper. If I'm not mistaken, I had a fake Siri app in place of the dashboard. Um, and apparently I have a software update. That's funny. But as you can see from my messy desk, I've plugged my power book up underneath to an external monitor, a Dell UltraSharp monitor to be exact. I've plugged in one four port USB hub to actually plug in other USB devices and to plug in the old Apple Pro keyboard and Magic Mouse. Well, it's not a Magic Mouse, I think it's a something. Um, it's an Apple mouse, I just can't remember. It's not the Magic Mouse, it's the one that came before it. The one with the trackball. Um, and I plugged in a second USB hub, in fact, a hub man, as I like to call it, to plug in a DVD drive so that I don't have to reach down at the power book all the time and use it. So, is the power book still usable? Actually, more than ever. Although, where I would recommend Tim 4 Fox last year, I now recommend Rocket Web Browser fully and wholeheartedly because of how fast it loads web pages. And the fact that I can play YouTube videos in the browser with hardly a hiccup. Boom. I mean, it's actually a lot, a lot faster than Tim 4 Fox. Obviously, it's still not going to be as fast as, you know, your Core i7, whatever. But if you're still using one of these, I would recommend, at this point, Rocket Web Browser. Where I would have recommended iWork09 back in, back last year, um, actually had a lot of compatibility problems between typing papers on here and then uploading them to my iPad so that I could drop them into my classwork. So I would actually now recommend Microsoft Word 2008, Office 2008. Um, even though it's 10 years old, everything still translates. Uh, you can type up a fully furnished Word document on here and pull it up on your iPad over there and everything still translates as it should. I know some of you still have a Spotify account through your power PC, but as of three weeks ago, Spotify just completely stopped working for me. I don't know if I need to uninstall it and reinstall it or anything like that. But right now, I would say unless you have a really, really big iTunes account, use something else to listen to music. Another must-have program, especially if you have a file server like me with a bunch of movies on it, is VLC Media Player. QuickTime does not cut the mustard anymore. Um, the last version of QuickTime on here barely plays MP4s. It does play the dot .movie format, but it does not play AVI, it does not play MPEG, it doesn't play anything like that. So, you have to have something that's going to play the videos on your file server. And VLC, in my opinion, is the best. Another fun program to have is Blender. If I'm not mistaken, which I could be, this is actually still up to date or close to it. Um, it's Blender 2.63 and I have loaded 3D images in here before and manipulated them. 
but that's a story for another time because I've got a secret project I'm working on. But Blender is absolutely an incredible program to use on a power PC. Another good tool that I would recommend from the Adobe CS2 suite is actually the After Effects render engine. Again, this goes back to having to render stuff before editing it. Um, but it's really fast at rendering and for whatever reason it accepts the clips from my iPhone as they are as a raw file and I can convert them to intermediate codec and have them in a renderable format to start editing. Finally for video editing what I recommend above all others now that I've actually took the time to learn how to use it is Final Cut Pro. I'm using Final Cut Pro 5 on here. Um, the only thing that I have to do out of the way is when I upload videos from the iPhone that I film with, I have to convert them into the Apple Intermediate Codec and then render them on here before I can actually edit. That, that does take about an hour, hour and a half, but it usually takes five hours to upload a video to YouTube anyway because I have really crappy internet, so I'm not really concerned. Um, if I need to quickly get something out, like, for example, the WWDC conference, I'm going to probably shoot a video on the list of supported and unsupported Macs for OS 10.13. Um, if I need something quick, I just edit on my iPad. But, you know, video like this that I know I'm going to upload by Saturday, I can throw it together on here and the render times really really don't matter for me. So, is PowerPC usable in 2017? Absolutely. Does this mean you should run out and buy one? Absolutely not. If you don't know how to get a hold of old programs or if you don't have them lying around, then this thing is pretty much as good as a paperweight. But, if you have one lying around and maybe you need a computer like I did when my MacBook blew up in my face a couple weeks ago in the middle of a final exam, then yes, they're still reliable machines. Um, with that being said, I want to go ahead and say I apologize for not creating content on the channel for a few months. Like I said, I was really, really busy with school. Um, but I am back, and I'm going to start creating more content and doing more things. Um, Especially, you know, with WWDC coming up next week. I believe it's next week. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It's either next week or the next. Um, we all know that Mac OS 10.13 is coming out. Uh, my Surface Pro has a Hackintosh partition, so I'm going to download 10.13 and hopefully, hopefully get this bucket of bolts running again. And, you know, if DOS Dude 1 releases a patch, I'll show you probably for the last time, how to do an unsupported Mac. Um, <clears throat> other than that, you know, I've got a couple of videos coming up, some surrounding the iPad, some surrounding my Surface Pro, but mostly how-tos because that's what you guys seem to like. But anyway, as you can see, I changed the logo a little bit. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below, and as always, take it easy. Thank you.